Be a voice. 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 Visit wisconsinvoices.org. Visit wisconsinvoices.org. Visit wisconsinvoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices. community is really uh in support of them and you know i definitely appreciate what they do together and how smooth it flows you know you got personalities that are strong but you got guys that get things done so it's not just folks out there just yelling at people and they ain't putting them to work i can say like man look they actually out there doing it putting in the work. doing it putting in the work and i'll say it again like i said at the gallery because Keon might have missed a little bit of it putting in that work you're doing what you're supposed to do and that recognition that Recognition gonna come and it'll be natural. It'll be genuine for the people that's observing it. So, yeah, thank y'all for that. Uh, outside of that, I hey, think we'll have- through the summer. Wait till we get this summer. We got <laughs> work for you this summer. Oh, no, don't forget. I didn't last summer, too. I had full of wings. No, we didn't have- I'm talking about, like, we working on getting, we had to skip a, a summer. Okay. Well, COVID shut us down. Oh, so it was something different than last year, right? Oh, the original, the first three summers were, uh, or two, was- uh, the summer program. Okay. We actually programmed the park from 8 a.m. to 12 noon uh, with basketball camps. Some, some Fazo walkers would come do the boot camp. Okay. Physical fitness. Alfonso. I used to work with Alfonso yeah. back in the day. <laughs> we had educators in the neighborhood doing tutoring. I used to say Arts and crafts. And then it just became beyond our programming because we just say, okay, we'll get the park back to the community at 12. Okay. But by four or five, folks wanted to be involved again. Mm -hmm. So it would. It would start up again like four, three, four in the afternoon, four or five, and then they go to eight. And uh, a lot of activity. We had the dojos from the area. We had two dojos, a uh, martial arts dojos. Uh, Kempo Goju has been there 50 plus years. And uh, the other brother who was inside of, uh, I can't think of his name, right off the end, who was inside of St. Mark Amy Church. And the Lions of Judah uh, would be there to help us out, period. So they came out and did some demonstrations. So Hopefully we can get it back together. We had the summer meals program from Her Love Place, like breakfast that. and lunch. So if we get you out there this summer, bro. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I already know it. I already know. Yeah. I already know. Yeah. I with you with the cat oh, you talking about that? Yeah. And then we get. Then oh, we try to do. <laughs> then we try to do like two or three events like that. Yeah. Look, that was a interesting day because I didn't even get to experience because I think we had something else going on. I had to leave and go do something else. I don't. I don't remember getting the full plate that day. I was a little well, disappointed. Well, think about it. The neighborhood family fellowships. Things like that, the major events, either the family fellowships or the family reunion, uh, which we brought the family. That was the family reunion. We brought that yeah. from the block. We would have that inside a neighborhood on the block. We brought it to the park because uh, it's really neighborhood. My, my family, my block wanted to have the block reunions. We did that for like four years. But we brought it back to the neighborhood, which is the old village that my parents didn't grew in before the blocks mm -hmm. got broken up. Mm -hmm. by, you know what? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and those are always amazing. This is the first year that the neighborhood literally bought into it. Uh, but we have Farina and uh, Brooks team with Dream Team United. They did an event with us, uh, family fellowship, a neighborhood family fellowship, uh, about a month before that. So by the time we got to the reunion, you know, Keon, do you need any help? And, you know, the folk, the residents actually, you know, came in. And I said, this is not a Keon event. I've been fighting this battle for six years. This is not a Keon event. This is our event. So what we need to do is, yes, can you cook? What do you want to do? We need you to act like this is yours and host the people that show up. Hmm. You know, and that's the that's the field. That's what the, the mission that's, of the that's, That was the vibe. That was the vibe. So those are always great to have three, four hundred people come back to the neighborhood <laughs> with the neighborhood. Yeah. Make sure they're there. Yeah. I, uh, Brandon, yeah, we got Brandon. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll definitely have to bring Brandon in. So, yeah, we got a few topics and things to go into before we get to our first guest. Uh, which is Brandon coming in to uh, let us know about what he has going on. All right, he's going to slide in. Come on, do my brother. Okay, got he's on down. He's on down. Yeah. All right. So after we uh, finish up with a few topics, we'll definitely make sure we get to Brandon. So uh, get started. Joe, uh, got any uh, policy updates or anything we need to know that's going on? I'm just what we've been pushing, and we're going to continue to push uh, through the month of March uh, is early voting, which starts March 19th. It's going to go through the 30th. Um, get out there, register, vote, vote early. Um, your vote counts and it matters. Um, these are some local elections that, uh, you know, like we say, say so many times that these national elections get so much attention and we put so much focus on them. But it's those local elections that actually really impact you, your family, your neighborhood, your community. So 
get out there and vote uh, March 19th through the 30th. We'll have more information here in maybe next week or the following week um, about those locations and where you can vote, where you can register and, and get out there and vote early. All right. Thank you. So um, you got any uh, information on where they can get uh, any, uh, you know, voting locations or what is going on? What's the websites we got for them, Joe? Oh, yeah. The website. Uh, or the website. <laughs> myvote.wi.gov. That's going to have all your information about uh, voting locations and and all kinds of information about Your voting zoom locations, zoom locations, locations, all that good stuff. So yeah, definitely visit that website. That's myvote.wi.gov. All right, thank you. All right, I'll just um, you know, with this weather being warm and it's so many things going on in the community. Uh, before I highlight uh the uh black excellence or that I want to spot today, I gotta uh, also shout out Latoya before I get into that. But I just want to talk about some of the you know just the recklessness and how we just got to be mindful. And, you know, if you're talking to your, your nieces, nephews, grandparents, or grandkids, excuse me, uh, anybody in the community that, you know, you have a, a hand on, if you're mentoring, et cetera, can you, if you're a grown adult, if you're an adult, just run it, run around the city, one, be cautious of, you know, the, the driving and always be a defensive driver, which I learned at a young age at, uh, South, uh, what was that, uh, what's the school in the South Side of South Milwaukee? What's the, what's the big South division? I took my driver's ed and the old driver's ed were way back in, 2002, 2003, um, please be a defensive driver, be aware of that. And also just be mindful of the people that are, are going to be recklessly driving. We had a, a guy in the community last night and I'm a spot, I just want to uh, spotlight this individual because he worked in the community out of the uh, gumbo truck that everybody see across the city. And if you've been on East Capitol, I was just on East Capitol when we were doing the truck the uh, other day with the uh, food pantry. Uh, Dumbo Valley. It's a young man named Andre Richards, and we want to shout him out. And you know, if there's anything that's going on that you know uh, we can do to just put him, you know, a little attention on him, maybe when his his uh, donations start kicking in, people will recognize the name and start supporting. But uh, he worked to create a food truck business called Gumbo Valley. Uh, you usually be parked off of uh, East Capitol, off of Holton. And yesterday, it looks like you know. Well, it took them 14 months to build this truck. So that's why it's such a big deal. You know, anybody that takes time, anybody that's built anything from scratch, you understand, you know, anything with your hands, anything that you worked on, that's your craft. And you, you know, you take it a lot of pride. That's your baby. Like we was talking about with people with their organizations uh, last week. Uh, he was working on his truck, uh, putting some gumbo together. And it looks like a woman uh, rear ended his gumbo uh, truck last night or his gumbo uh, uh food truck and and pretty much dismantled the whole thing did y'all see this oh, wow yeah you seen the truck before haven't you yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it is gone. yeah it's off the chain it's, yeah it's yeah. it's gone it's they good. somebody wow. young and what we looks like is morgan police arrested a 28 year old woman who we're ended mr uh <laughs> mr andre Richards. what was wrong with her because it's parked off to the side on oh, suspicion of operating while intoxicated wow not only being reckless, and it wasn't even late. When I seen this, I seen people talking about it. I seen it around, it, was it a quarter to seven? Did you oh. see this yesterday, B? Yeah. Um, just the the way I felt it this morning, seeing him really speak on it on, on, on the news. We be on here sometimes. You see the same side of You're right. right. So you right. know this man is serious about his, about his business. And anybody that uh, has ever been to his truck, I'm sure you understand and work hard or have food business, you understand how hard it is not only building, you know, your, your not, you know, quote unquote brick and mortar, ground. but from the ground up, but also building in customers. It's hard getting people to come to try your new food, especially in Milwaukee, you know, so mm -hmm. Milwaukee got this little code. If we found out one little thing was off one time, it'd spread like wildfire. Uh -huh. But, you know, and it could be just one day where the ingredients was off. But, you know, this guy actually had a following. You said you didn't been there and I always yeah. see it. I used to see him when we was doing our campaign back in, uh, when we was doing our voter project. I would see him and we was across the city on East Capitol. And sometime he'd be up the street, uh, off of 76 randomly, but most likely it was East Capitol. I, I see him. see him at East Capitol. East Capitol, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it it might have been that waffle truck I was seeing. I know it was like red. That one day that waffle truck was over yeah. there. It was like Second orange. Night. Yeah, it's orange and green. Yeah, okay, that's the waffle yeah. truck. But yeah, okay. Yeah, the chicken and waffles. Shout out to the chicken and waffles, too. We, we love chicken and waffles. Mm -hmm. So I just want to bring that up, uh, you know, talking about the uh, reckless driving. I see that Common Council has, uh, back in January, they had passed something about uh, a, a new resolution to collect metrics determining the effectiveness of the reckless driving uh, program. So I, I guess this is a no, new way of just pretty much focusing on the reckless driving. I just want to highlight and just 
I want everybody just to be aware. Slow down. Yeah, this slowing down. If they're looking at different ways to see if we're they're catching the metrics right, that means that they don't know if the reckless driving is worse or better than what we we actually say. I think it is is worse. Because I'm seeing not only the young adults doing this, I'm seeing the older adults and some people who I know don't live in our community driving through our community reckless mm -hmm. as well. I see some people that look like they might have, you know, came from up north somewhere or we could fly through our community, you know. So, yeah, you, we just got to be cautious. We all got family out here. Team yeah, flying, flying through, like, yeah. Hey, slow down. Yeah, I was looking at a couple <laughs> pickup trucks that was looking a little, you know, um, I can't really say, you know, what I really want to say, but just say the average pickup truck, Josie floating through the city, flying up Final Act one day. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Look like he's trying to hit back on that highway a little bit too quick. But that's another area that Final Act in Hampton is, mm -hmm. is is another tough one outside of where we at right now between, you know, Atkinson Capital and mm -hmm. Tatonia. Um, well, you know, Brian, you know, we kind of touched on this a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. We were talking about, you know, the we before me. Um, looking towards the community instead of being so selfish sometimes. And when we go out there, we get behind the wheel, we're intoxicated. We take out a food truck like that. Yeah. That, that's a staple in our community. That's yeah. a staple in our neighborhood. Yeah. That, that puts continuity into our neighborhoods, a sense of place. Mm -hmm. So now we're, we're not going to have that food truck in our neighborhood now because someone was selfish and made a selfish de decision. So it's about thinking about the community, about the whole picture. When we go out and we do these things and taking care of our communities. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, that's true. Good, good point. Yeah, that's, good yeah, that's point. a great point. Oh, yeah. Great point. Because even the way he was talking, he was like, man, I stopped. I got out the streets to do this. That was him saying it, crying. You know, I felt that. I'm like, I got to gotta highlight this man in some way. So, you know, you know, prayers to you. And Hopefully uh, we can um, get donations. Yeah. He'll fix his truck again because he had a great, and his um, gumbo truck was great. The yeah. food was great. He had pleasant service. He didn't hold you long. And the community support him. Yeah, and the community support him. So hopefully we as a community can um, still support him and build him up. Because coming off the streets to really take 14 months to uh, build a truck right? and to make gumbo, yeah. that is not an easy dish Especially to make. gumbo. <laughs> hey, right. Set that out. Look, you know, at a good gumbo. Yeah, I've, met, I've got to the point where, you know, twice I've, I've passed the test at, in my family. I told you about I usually tell the office about my little missions when it comes mm -hmm. to come to food and gumbo is something I've been working on the two times I've I've done it. It came out great. Um, my funny, uh, my say my funny. My family don't play around when it comes to food. They funny what? about it. So my granny, if she ain't eating it, it ain't it ain't what it is. And even my auntie, she honest. My uncle called me and told me it was legit. So yeah, you can't you gotta take time with gumbo. Gumbo take me like five or six hours or more mm -hmm. to get it going. So yeah. So props to him. I, I know he has a strong And it's term. expensive, too. It is. I, we spent a lot of money on that gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> I think he'll be, I think he's going to bounce back even stronger. You know, people seeing something like that happen to a guy that, you said, is creating, you know, great energy in the community, feeding nutrients to the community. Who wouldn't want to support that? So, you know, I'm sure we'll find out. And if it's any way that Wisconsin Voices can assist and, you know, getting something going, I know we will. You know, Toy, you got connections. You know everybody when it comes to partnership games. So I'm sure somebody yeah. knows who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to um, the uh, the interview with boy right here, B, it's the Brandon Triggs, I want to just go over uh, uh, the Celebrating Black Excellence. And today we chose somebody. And the reason why I went through a revamp that I got, I'll just hold the other people because Latoya, me and Latoya was talking last night, you know, great teammates. They they work together even after hours. Yeah. And she called me last night. I was just relaxing at home. I decided to uh, revamp and, and go from, you know, somebody that's currently doing big things. And I chose to just go with somebody that uh, I think, you know, in the science, scientific world and in the black community, if you don't know this guy, you should, you know, just know a little bit about him. But uh, today we, uh, we're going to do Neil deGrasse Tyson. So in honor of Black History Month, uh, we were assigned a spotlight on the brilliant astrophysicist, cosmologist, and science communicator, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, he was born October 5th, 1958 in New York City. Tyson's passion for the cosmos was ignited at a young age. Uh, despite facing adversity, he pursued his love for science, eventually earned a bachelor's of arts and physics from Harvard University and a PhD in astrophysics from Columbia University. Uh, Dr. Tyson's groundbreaking work in astrophysics has not only expanded, excuse me, expanded our understanding of the universe, but has also inspired countless individuals, particularly within the Black community, to pursue, pursue careers in STEM, 
which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, he has served as a director of Hayden Planetarium and has been a prominent figure in science communication, making positive, excuse me, making complex scientific concepts accessible to the public through books, television programs like Cosmos, a Space Time Odyssey, and his podca podcast, a Star Talk Radio. Uh, beyond, beyond his academic and professional achievements, Dr. Tyson has been a vocal advocate for diversity and inclusion in the scientific community, emphasizing the importance of representation and equal access to opportunities for all aspiring scientists, regardless of background. Uh, join us as we celebrate the remarkable contributions of Neil deGrasse Tyson, a trailblazer in the field of astrophysics and a true inspiration uh, for the generations to come. Uh, so as you see, and if you don't know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is, type him in on Facebook. This man has some of the fascinating. most fascinating, man, the facts and the things that you can learn from this guy from just watching the clip. You'd be like, yeah, we uh, we ain't really too much in the uh, galaxy. <laughs> it makes you feel really small. Yeah. I mean, even, I know, even if you knew some things prior to that, you'd be like, okay, yeah, we, we on a real, real, real low end the spectrum with this. And, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for real. So I just wanted to highlight him. Said it best, <laughs> yeah, like 2020 encyclopedia. Got to bring my boy Brandon in, man. It's about that time. Bring you in, Brandon. Um, just want to get in, get this guy in. Uh, we've been working with uh, Brandon and Keon through Wisconsin Voices uh, since I've been uh, uh, really. What, you, what would you say now, Latoya? Mm. Oh, Brandon was around before you even got hired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I figured. Can't I figured. Around. UGH, I introduced me to you guys yeah. uh, with some canvas at work. Yeah. Over a year ago. Okay. A year and a half ago or so. Nice. Maybe two. So we got to do the real part now. We got to have Brandon introduce himself, tell him who he is, who you are to Milwaukee again, if they don't know. And, um, you know, share some of your. Uh, my name is Brandon Trillian. Um, great. Just been in the community working for a while. Uh, Keon Jackson Malone got me into this work. Uh, you know, he told me I kind of been doing the work in the community already. So he kind of took us under his wing. And here we are. We done made relationships with a few different organizations. Wisconsin Voices being one of the most prominent ones just because they always show up for us. They always looking out for us. They always willing to lend a helping hand. They get out there and do the groundwork with us, help us pass out food, load up trucks, everything. So, man, I love these people up here, man. They gave us a great opportunity. Yeah. And y'all get a community a great opportunity. I'm going to make a correction on that when we come back from no. the break. Because, see, <laughs> I, I appreciate the live, but I'm going to give you a little history. So, <laughs> I love to hear it. I'm going to hear it. God put it together. I didn't even realize what God was putting together. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it goes beyond me and Brandon. <laughs> Catch Wisconsin Voices via Voice Radio every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. as we focus on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices via Voice Radio. Follow us at BAWI Voice and learn more at wisconsinvoices.org. Wisconsin Voices three pillars: protecting democracy, teaching advocacy. Building community. A uh, real quick, Latoya. What was we talking about last night? What we got going on is uh, what is that? Is that Thursday? Yes, this oh. Thursday we have hey, quick. um Black Advocacy Day at the Capitol. So we're nice. asking everybody to come out. Um, uh, as many people as th that can, please come out because um we have a great day of touring the um uh, um our Capitol in Madison. Um, we're teaching people how to uh lobby their legislators and let them know of issues they um, feel are important in their community. And we also have a reception at the governor's house. So uh, we had a hood at the governor's house. Oh. We be kicking it. <laughs> and that was my first time in the governor's house when we went last year. Yeah. And it's going to be warm, so it's going to be beautiful out there. I'm going to be in that backyard. I like that backyard back there. <laughs> you off the, the lake. entire Wisconsin Voices staff there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody but Tamika. Well, Tamika's Tamika. the yeah, in yeah, Miami. <laughs> but everybody else will be there. Tim, Nicole, Brian, Joe, Angelique, all of us will be there. I believe Angelique is going to. I'm not sure. Um, but yes, 
it's a great day. You uh, actually, we did it before. Um, I always um, shout out to Mr. Jackson coming in. Slide. <laughs> but um, what's going on, my brother? That's a that's a good event. It it, it really is. Yeah, of course. Later on that evening, I will be up at like I said during the morning. Well, uh, that evening at five o'clock, at uh, there's another intergenerational transformative conversation circle going on. We had this a couple months ago uh, at Claiborne's place. The Black Historical Society, sponsored by Safe and Sound, and uh, West Care, Wisconsin. Okay. And other uh, partners. Um, it was a great turnout. Guaranteed to have more tables. I know, hosted by uh, yours truly, you know, facilitated by yours truly, Kia Jackson Law. Um, by sixty folks uh, last time, and it was amazing. Okay. Uh, great turnout. Great conversations. A lot of great positive love. Uh, a lot of conversation. A lot of participation. So uh, this is it. At um, Claiborne's place, that's 26th and Center Street, the Black Wisconsin Black Historical Society, 5 p.m. So, uh, if you're in Madison, want to come back and get into that? Come on down. If you can't make it to Madison, come on and have some intergenerational transfer. Yes. Uh, at Claiborne's place. Sounds like a win. Amen. Amen. All right. So we get back into that. Getting to know Mr. Brandon Triggs over here. Uh, what you got going on, Brandon? And and what what's this story that you and Keon was about to get into that I really want to hear about? Keon said you got a little more info into how this relationship cultivated. I would love to hear about it. I can only tell you from where I jumped into it as in the middle when it was already going. So what he had going on before that, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> because I hadn't even paid attention to the past that we had um, until one day Brandon was like, man, you remember I was at your house when I was about 15. We're about 15, 16. Your I'm cousin, right back there. Said, man, my, my cousin Darvin had brought me over to your house. So he had a cousin named Darvin Triggs, who when I when I very when I got into community work the very first time, man, 2010, 2011, when I had stepped into the uh first uh neighborhood block club meetings that I was going to. Um <laughs> the first time I met Rosa Cameron, she they're gonna get chapman right there. <laughs> And I would go to these meetings and, you know, they were having them at a church up on 10th and they were talking about, you know, this uh, liquor store and on 11th and that apartment building that's chaos and confusion. And and his cousin Darvin and I used to. Let me know, stop you right there. That's That was my uncle, my uncle, dad, youngest uncle. brother. But really, that's like my big brother. Okay. Man, the only big brother I ever had for real. I was with him from day one on the. So he's your uncle. Yeah. So Uncle Darvin. So Darwin and I used to, you know, at the end of the day, we had these uh, conversations, these the first of the man conversations for me. Uh, you know, he was talking to me about things like LLCs and nonprofits. So we just be building. So I told him about these meetings. You know how it is. Sometimes the, I tell a lot of these cats in the neighborhood, go to these block club meetings because, you know, it's not that, you know, so-and-so is telling on you the neighborhood is talking. And you need to be present, not to put fear in nobody, but to understand what it is. I said, man, um, the thing is the chaos that's going on around the apartment building. And these are people that's coming in to manage the apartment building. They don't know nothing about the neighborhood. And, you know, so there's a lot of complaints about just activity and whatnot. I tell folks, you know, pick up the garbage, do this and that. I didn't know the next meeting somebody said, I know who's been talking to folks in the neighborhood. And I was like, yeah, you're so humble. They just got a great report from the apartment building. And it wasn't me. It was dark. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Who yeah, took yeah. action? His yeah. uncle. Because that was the block. Darvin had a basketball thing he was okay. doing. We were talking to the church about building a, because uh, he was doing things in the park. It was HKBT it was, was what he was doing. There we go. Here My dad HKBT. started that a while back. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Darvin was talking about, there was, there, there was a shooting over there where it had nothing to do with the neighborhood. It was some guys that rode through looking for somebody else. Um, and mistake somebody's identity, and a guy had got shot that had just moved here from Mississippi, and he was the he was the, the, uh, the caretaker of his sibling. Uh, and you know, one of my guys, Albert, happened to be um, he had a child in front of him teaching him how to dribble, and he said he just happened to have spin that spun that child out from in front of him, and he felt some hot in his stomach where that child head had just been. Oh, so they were like, "We're not going back in the park." You know, uh, the guy had got killed. Albert had got shot. Uh, so Darwin was talking to me about um, asking the church about a gym. The church had just been gym, faithful mission, 
up on Tenth and Keith, mm-hmm. and it was an all-purpose building, building, multi-purpose building. Yeah. And uh, I talked to uh, the pastor at the time, and he was like, "Yeah, we can." It was for the children. He was like, "Not adults, but the kids." We had talked about putting a basketball court here. That's very, that's very much so a possibility. So we had that going on, but unfortunately, um, Darwin left us um, not long after that. So as the time went on, uh, our uh, with the village group being formed in two, that was in 2011 or 12 or something like that. Yeah, so 2017, when I get into the work and get into the community real heavy, yeah, um, we start the village group. Had a woman die in uh, Strawder. Uh, rest her soul. She passed away in in, um, in December of uh, twenty three last year. She had went to a she had a stroke in August, and she was a no call no show. But this was the woman in twenty seventeen that started helping me with my first event. Mm-hmm. And then she over the over the winter of that year, she had met some kids that wanted a basketball camp. Okay, so I said I'll see what I can do. I know some of the neighborhood coaches, and I really was close with Terrence uh, Griffin. Okay. And that first year, Terry said, yeah, we could do something I call Brandon and, 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 you know, so-and-so and so-and-so. So that first year, we put together a basketball camp and got Heart Love a place to give us meals. And we just programmed back at some park. And they were like, Brandon and HKBT, actually, uh, I got it right there. After all these years. <laughs> <laughs> he corrected me. I used to, I used to, the, I used to I the letters with me. So uh, HBKT, he was like, it's HKBT. So, um, uh, we programmed that first summer. The second summer, we programmed. It got kind of hectic out there <laughs> with the volunteers. But Diane Strader was my A one day when we she started. Kept everybody the line for we yeah. kept, I get it now. She kept everybody in line. Yeah. And then the next year, things went kind of haywire. So the next time around, some folks didn't want to really participate because you know how it is when people that don't know find information that they don't really understand, like with grants and stuff, and how you got to operate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, I know spent eight, $800,000. I'm still dressed like them, and I done spent a million dollars. He got all the money in there. So I asked Brandon, you know, the next year if he would participate, and he said he would. And uh, the rest has been history ever since. I didn't know his character like that um, because I was really working through Terrence. But then he came to me one day and brought up Darvin and coming to my house. And I was like, whoa, so this was in the making 10 years ago. You know, and that's what it was for. It was for HKBT, that gym that we still out there looking for now. And like when you and Terrence clashed, I had to mediate that situation and kind of step in and take over. And like you said, it was so much drama going on in the park. People getting shot left and right over there all the time. And now with us having that camp and just occupying that space every yeah. morning in the summer, people respect the kids' space. Yeah. You know, they okay. Be out of respect for y'all and the kids. We gonna take that over here. You know what I'm saying? Well, that first year, 2018, it took a lot to get that park activated because the county didn't want to activate it. Because of what he's talking about through the night, they tore down the buildings and they deactivated that park. Yeah, that park had gotten deactivated. Boy, uh, rest his soul, but he got paralyzed in that park. <laughs> so I know. Please. And even more so before and we were... look st- how y'all got it. So I got to say that. Look how y'all got it now. It's, it's a peaceful place. I... Back in the days in the nineties, yeah. I wouldn't have dared one come. Man, well, I would have been like, <laughs> man, look, I, I would have been like, oh no, heck, it's important. No, no. <laughs> as as Brandon know, because he know a lot of the same people from the area, just because we just seeing how how it connect as well. You know, one of my best friends that we, you know, uh, Dante, he's across, and his family is right there. And uh, another guy I grew used to hang out with named Pat. He was on Sixteenth, and then my aunt Barbara, y'all might not even know my aunt. my aunt Barbara. I keep getting. Forgive me, I gotta go see my great aunt. That's my granddad, George Sanders. His uh, his uh, little baby sister. She stayed right around the corner on Fifteenth. I need to go see her on days when we do the pantry. But you see how everybody just the mix and the correlation. Even when I was in high school, I went and pulled up at at Atkinson Park, and that was oh one oh five. So well, let me, let me I, y'all can even see at the pantry sometime like how how us how some of us in the neighborhood just bicker and go at each other just yeah. the family yeah. 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 really fair no, and you're fair Mr. Brandon called one time and I was like no he was like man that's my well yeah. let me tell you something um, th- there was a situation where you know people put, put in their heart and soul and they got this thing called passion pimping that I definitely don't do mm-hmm. um, so I had to find a way to get my you know without having funds to get my brothers them some type of um Funding so that they could passion. Poverty payment? No, no. Passion payment is when you find out people like to do something. Oh, you give them a, oh. a very minimum because you know they like it. Oh, yeah. They yeah. want to do it. 
when they were in the a little bit with. Yeah, yeah. So these brothers, I need, yeah. I need to be out of this. I like that. Hey, Harrison, yeah. you know, uh, you know somebody love it, so you can lowball it. Or they want to do it. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to stop. Okay. Right. No. So I knew my, uh, brother, my brothers here. wanted to play basketball, and they wanted to teach the kids, but it was the financial thing. So lucky enough, thanks to God, I had the connections in the community and with the city and with OVP with the new product checks that were going on. And this goes back to the beginning story, how we got in the park. Mm-hmm. So I was able to connect Brandon and with OVP. Was that last year with the Promise Keepers? To- he connected us with, actually, with UGHI at first, honestly. Yeah. Well, I, well, that came out of that. Yeah, they, they we were your with y'all. They came out right. So to be who they are in the community, because they already have the influence, kind of like the 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 branch off from Full and Full Life, the Credible Messenger Program. Okay. Those who come from atmospheres that are changing their life and making a change, that have the influence skill. You know, people look at you. A lot of people want to escape what they're going through. But, you know, peer pressure is for real. The atmospheric pressure is even deeper. You know what I'm saying? So branding them to be who they were, and tearing them to be so, edu- you know, uh, intellectually astute and into politics. Oh, uh, t- Terrence, when you talk to Terrence, oh, my God, you would never... He need to run for some office soon, mm-hmm. you know. But they became became part of that program, and because they were the truth, they were on the block. They weren't just coming into a program and trying to do something. They knew the folks that were going through stuff. I got rave reports, you know. Not only that, their basketball camp over the years, I was getting calls from folks in city government like, dude, people are coming off the freeway going to work, and they see kids up at 8 o'clock in the morning at Atkinson Park. Right. Dude, that's a big thing, bigger yeah. than you know. That's Atkinson Park. Right. But that all started, I got to give props to my man, and I probably don't want to be named, but I'm going to do it. You know, my cousin, Anton Carter, you know, they call him Black or Billy. Um, one of the last, you know, wild childs. We ran together in that certain phase of my life, and he left me in the car wild to go get some degrees, you know, but he was still that dude. He's actually the person that changed my mindset about the way we was handling things. I was already one foot in, one foot out, you know, but I, I went in the radio and made some changes behind the depression. He went to go get a couple of degrees, um, but he was a major influence and still is a major uh, yeah, influence yeah. in the neighborhood. What you say, you don't see the bosses until something could go wrong. And when you see them, you get out the way. Well, one day he rolled up in the beginning of my career uh, at radio. By 2016, he said, man, you know, it's a generational beef out here in this neighborhood, in this community that's been spanning for decades, and it's yeah. time to stop. Yeah, He said, because you can do it. Because I was always, I'm starting to understand without even knowing, I always had relationships with folks. You know, I was always the, I'll go with you. You know, I'm one of the tough guy, but I can get tough with you. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to protect my people. I'm not going to do this. Mm-hmm. And my cousin is the same. He want to talk you out of it. But if he can't talk you out of it, well, Dang. here we go. Right. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> there was a, a, these family beefs that, you know, went on for like 30 years. Like black by black type beasts. Well, Family names, and if you're from the area, you know these yeah. right. 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 You know those families, yeah. and he was part of the low end, and it was a lot of stuff where kids grew up together. But when they found a certain age, they Seriously. fell into this beef because you're this family and you that family, right? And they even said, "Man, we used to play basketball together, but now we can't be friends because I'm gonna this is my last name, mm-hmm. and that's his last name." Mm-hmm. That feels in the court. So the first thing I really ever did. When and, and thank yeah, God for blocking, blocking away from each other, <laughs> blocking away from each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I told well, you, well, 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 ever since you said it, and then he said it. Now, that was the family. That was the family I wouldn't talk to, and did not realize how tight my family was with that family, the Malone, right. and uh, the Sloans, and you know some other yeah. families there. And uh, we we met. We met at the building we were working in. Um, some of the elders, um, mm-hmm. from all those the Office of Violence Prevention. And uh, we had some conversations about what I was going, what I was trying to do in the park, and they were trying to bring this reunion back that they had been having, but they were still that stuff. Which hopefully we get to bring it back this summer. This summer. back to Lincoln because they haven't we're going back, back. No, it needs not to be at Lincoln. It needs back to back to Ax. But they wouldn't even give them permits back. Then. So uh-huh. to be able to do it now would be would be historic because it needs to come home. Um, and they've been having this reunion for 25, 30 years. Listen, yeah. how old these elders are. So. The, the park stuff and helping kids better themselves and the work the village group does is village for real. You know, these are people that my dad, my mother knew went to school with, you know, La Follette, uh, Parkman, Rufus King. Uh, so it, it's really bigger than that. It took a lot just to get us there. It wasn't just about programming the park. Right. It is. It's been stuff going down where it's been like people shooting at each other and it'd be like, oh, man, I had to call Keon and or Keon to call me and we, oh, man, that's what's the name. Man, let me call that's, that's, it that. That's his son. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh, no, I'm right. you know, we all at the park kicking it, whatever, whatever. They together and everything is, 
That was yesterday. Yeah. That's what's the and that's what the park work does. I even seen like, that. Uh when we uh the uh, a couple of uh months ago when the man was shooting <laughs> And you would have think that people got to running. No. I got to walking towards them like, man, what the hell wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and he drove off slowly with the left tire looking at me. I was like, hey, wasn't that one day at the parish you saw yeah. him? Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was pissed because there was 12 news there. And he just went to fire it off shots while we were setting up there. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, man, what is wrong with you? Yeah, I think I just just missed it. At, yeah. Because we're going to end up knowing everybody yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's the authority God gives you because I tell a lot of cats, man, I'm touching, but you don't want to be responsible for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I already know I'm going to be buried. Mm-hmm. And he is my father, my mother, my two sisters, and mm-hmm. we bought those plots in 94. My hey, dad. I got a crib. So, so my I'll whole thing you. is, <laughs> you know, we don't have to do this. You know, what? You know, I, I feed too many people. I love too many people. Yeah. Too many people love, and people yeah. love you. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I had a friend that got killed there uh, over there some years ago, an elder. And, you know, his uh, his best friend's son was the one that did it. You know, somebody he grew up with over some dumb stuff. And it just kind of shook the neighborhood because, once again, that is our Just That's how my Uncle Darwin, the one I told you I was so influential with HKBT, his friend, him, he, my uncle killed him. Just what? brothers fight. Accident. Yeah, so I say brothers wow. fight. You know, they always quarrel. And, you know, and it just <laughs> happened that he hit him right here. And he fell and hit his head on the concrete. Wow. Yeah. Gotcha. I do just want to. While we talking about just overall, y'all too. Again, we want to bring like you that. and Mr. Sylvester. Oh, please, oh too. Yeah, let me that thank y'all for that award, man. Y'all gave. You know, yeah, that's what I was doing. It's yeah. just yeah. last gala, man. We really appreciate that. Y'all surprised me with that. We one, appreciate though. y'all. Yeah, that yeah, award is nothing. Now, that award uh, touched me so much because I didn't see him walking up to me, and he was so excited <laughs> that I wanted to cry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know what? You know, I want you, you know doing. where that come from? I ain't never won nothing outside of the quarter of the he field in my life, though. So it's just it was extra special to me. That's what it is. It's recognizing the real heroes in our community. And that's yeah. what that really was about, recognizing the real heroes in our community, the people that actually show up and yeah. showing up for their community, not just in here on a, a nice little radio show, sound good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Y'all really, really do. I'm sure Brandon oh, remember when I said it. I was like, uh, and excuse me for kind of paying you off. So but, uh, when I said to the, when I got up there, I was maybe a little too relaxed, but I was kind of leaning on the podium a little bit. And I was like, look, we don't need you in here for photo ops. I wouldn't even pay attention to that. But... <laughs> you weren't near yet. So... I didn't even know he was on his way. I thought, you know, it was, you know, in my head, Brandon was coming up and I was going with that. I look up, I'm like, oh, he out here, but. You know, just getting up there, like you said, this ain't for photo ops. We barely take pictures at the uh, yeah. with, with stuff that y'all do, and you should be. Because people out here that's doing 20-minute events are taking 100 pictures, and they ain't putting yeah. in the work. So, yeah. I mean, to the point where hey, we're all somebody real. I ain't I even see no cameras, dog. Man, up there, there, I, oh, sometimes I, I, do it. I, never, yeah, never, I never see yeah. either, and none of y'all are trying to get a photo op or nothing. No. Yeah. Because in the streets, we had it gone. That went on Albert Plus. You already know. Right. You already know how I've been. What you doing with that? It's kind of hard to avoid. No, hey, you can't go uh, out it. Oh, I still got that, though. Know, I still kind of, you know, still kind of got it. Got a war. No, now I'm just, I'm broad. So with that, I just, uh, I got it. I know y'all got to get this. Yeah. I do want to say, I, from the first one, I mean, I got, I was, I received some certificates and awards I didn't even recognize until I took everything to my mother's house. You know, and I cleared everything up. I was like, whoa. I really been out here doing this when I was still getting messed up and half depressed. Mm-hmm. You know them little certificates they give you, Northwest Side CDC. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, where you the office that you are in now. Grace mm-hmm. Wilson was the first person to give me a change maker award, and I didn't recognize it until five six years later when I looked at it. But I've I've received. See award. how that truck flying? I told you these trucks flying. <laughs> I, 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 I've I've received the awards. I wonder for what? Because to me, I'm like I haven't done anything. But I started to realize that doing something is for real. Because mm. a lot of people aren't really doing anything. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of feel like, you know, y'all always support me. Definitely Tamika, you know, whether it was personal or, or organizational. So I was like, you know, they doing this. And I, but boy, I tell you, when I saw his eyes in the dark, it, it made me understood. I asked, I gave him access to something and people access to him. And it meant so much to him that I just got shocked. You know, I didn't know what to say. I was going to walk up and be like, thank you, good night, like Russell Simmons. Yeah. But when I saw him and he grabbed me, like, I ain't never. I said, okay, that's what this is. Right. right. Yeah. It's, giving, it's giving that credit where it is due. 
that you know I mean, these tears people of my really eyes now, out man. here so doing that y'all work. Real, y'all and always support you, her. And you, you are a beautiful, I mean, magnificent man in love. the community, Brand. You <laughs> really are. And it's cast, and it's cast <laughs> like block. you. You know, we ask for support. Like yeah. almost had yeah. to beg for support. And they still, you know, halfway behind us when it when it when it benefit them. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, yeah. All yeah. Shit, you just know it's real from y'all, I man. Y'all there when it benefits y'all or when the light shine light yeah. shining on us. Yeah. Y'all still there one hundred percent down and we appreciate y'all and yeah. love all of y'all for that for real. Yeah. 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 Man, I make this man the first time. He he extended his services to me and said, Man, I'm gonna help you get some grass or whatever. Just come down and sit down with me. And I ain't did it yet, but my God. They just let us the rest of it. That's just what it is. And I, and I, I'm going to have to say, it is one thing, Kia. I, I love being in this room full of men right here. Y'all all some real men. Appreciate it. Stand up for the hood. Yeah. All, all the way from yep. the south side to the north side. Yeah. We stand up. And, and I think I, it's yeah, just like a real you. love. Please join Wisconsin Voices every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We will be focusing on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. You're listening to Wisconsin Voices Be A Voice Radio. Follow us at B A W I Voice and learn more at WisconsinVoices.org. The three pillars of Wisconsin Voices are protecting democracy, teaching advocacy, and building community. Learn more about Wisconsin Voices and our partners at wisconsinvoices.org. Stay up to date on our community events page and get involved by visiting our donation page. And even for me, I, I, I didn't grow up in Axis, but I told you I spent some time over there and, you know, ran a parts of my teenage years and younger does with my aunties and my friends hanging out probably when I shouldn't have been at Lindbergh Park. Stuff Ooh, like that. Bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. How's <laughs> it going over there at Lindbergh Park? Shout out to his friends from over there. But, you know, I, I grew up not too far. I mean, Hampton, I grew up on 19th Hampton. So I was on Atkinson all the time. Red Snapper. I stayed at KFC and Red Snapper with my granny. Going to the, Snapper. Man, that, that was the only Red Snapper I knew about growing up. So that's how I knew. That was my early years of Atkinson. So going to be over there. Oh, man. Yeah, back then, I'm the, that was my granny used to love them catfish fillets. So just going over there, being able to contribute on another end as a dope. It does mean a lot. So again, like I said, just you know, much love and shout out to y'all and 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 God bless y'all with everything y'all doing. And as long as we uh got the opportunities to work in, whether it's Wisconsin Voices or whoever we work yeah. with, we'll definitely be in support. As long as I'm, I'm here in the mill. So, Mr. Jackson, Sylvester, we ain't forgot about you, man. You came in. I'm a very patient man. I love to take that. You know. I, I, I do believe in being patient. You know, we live in a world where everything, everybody want to speed up, don't want to lay back. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? Your turn always going to come. All you got to do is be patient. Yes, but, you know, I, I'm just glad to have this moment with real people yes, because we know in our community the problem is we got too many fake people Ooh. in these positions that claiming what they're not doing and being. Mm -hmm. We are the doers. You know what I'm saying? We the ones boots on the ground. We the ones that is not afraid to go in the community. Everybody claims so dangerous. So mm -hmm. I thank God for each and every one of us that's in here today because it takes people like us to make the difference for tomorrow for the generation that's coming. Uh, but, you know, I, I do want to drop some, you know, uh, my name's Sylvester Jackson. Thank you. Wait for that. I'm the co-founder of the Believers for Change. You know, me and my wife put that together in 21 and, you know, Always hats off to Wisconsin Voices who have given us support, you know what I'm saying, unconditional support for us to push our agenda. And uh, we, we can't thank them enough because it's, it's a lot of big organizations talking to talk, but very few walking the walk. But I do want to drop some knowledge down to the community going on around reentry. Uh, there is a bill, a Senate bill, uh, that is one vote away from passing and it's for the um the bill is for um when you having your uh record expunged. This bill been in uh it's been fought for, for five years right now by Gorky. Uh I think Evan Gorky. Evan Gorky. And uh he's getting ready to step down. So this would be a beautiful gift for him to walk away with because he puts so much into this bill. This bill would allow people to get the they record as sponge 
And then, you know, it makes a difference when you're applying for a job, when you're trying to soar to another level yeah. and you don't have that stain on your record. Mm -hmm. So this bill is one vote from the Republican side to pass. And we're asking everyone to call Senator Rob Hutton, Senator Rob Hutton, okay. because he's the most likely one that will uh, move, you know, across the aisle to make this bill possible. Uh, again, the bill number is SB 38, Senate Bill 38. It's a expungement bill that is very critical, especially to the black community. Oh, right. Because we know most people that this, this reentry effect is black in our community. So we want to push our people to call Senator Hutton, Rob Hutton, and ask him to please support this bill and let's get it passed so people can get a second chance to move on into, you know, wherever God inspired them to move on in life. So that, that's all I really wanted to drop down because that's important in our community. I'm, a, I'm, I'm part of the reentry community. People coming home from prison after doing time, we should have a right to have a better life as well. Yeah, we are here putting in the work to change. So let's remember this. Senator Rob Hutton, Bill SB 38, call Senator Rob Hutton and ask him to please support this bill. And let's get that expungement bill done. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's really, you. I, I have to tell y'all, that's something really um important at that SB 38. Um, um, I'll say this quick little story of what he's talking about. My husband had, um, he went to prison, God rest his soul. He's in heaven now, but he went to prison. And well, when he, when he first got arrested, he, uh, got the ar ar armed and danger by, from shooting at the police. Mm -hmm. So he didn't, he'd been out of prison good 20 years. We went to Madison and he had a child support warrant. Do you know they came? I was driving. He was on the passenger side. Do you know they came up to that car with all kind of guns on us? <laughs> and they, because his record wasn't expunged. So uh, even 30 years later, they still had the uh, armed and dangerous on there. So how they had to approach that car is they had to have guns in my face just to, for child support uh, warrant. So. That really is important. That would really save a lot of lives and help them um, get to the next level. I agree. I was working in uh, Mr. Jackson, if he's comfortable with me, just kind of sharing how we met. Mr. Jackson met when I was working at, for a food share employment training program. And I'm sorry for not recognizing you at first. There's so many people you work with. Yeah. And I do want to say everything, Carl, when he started mentioning, I do remember at the end, we used to have to do certificates and for people coming through the workshop. And I do remember just like that whole, you know, being with him, and I do remember him once I sat down and really thought about it, because that's the only way that I can remember a lot of the people I had. That were, and, and he, you were focused. I remember that. You weren't playing no games. You was on everything when it came to getting resumes updated, um, interview stuff. You remember I used to do little mock panels, and, and I tried to create a, I tried to create a real balanced uh, uh, environment, just kind of how I do anytime I have control of workshop. Because you got people coming from so many backgrounds, and and one of the big things I dealt with was people coming back, and they had you know, offenses, whatever it was, it's time for these guys came through and we had more grind and hustle than the people that was been out here with no time. It's just been out here creating havoc and just creating uh, all these ugly situations for themselves and Milwaukee. And you got guys coming out who are ready to change the city and can't get the chance to change the city because they got something lingering over them. But I've made a, 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 a white counterpart at a bar and this guy get out and he told me, and this was back, before I even got into the FSET program, he was like, man, I just uh, got out. I'm starting at this job and they're paying me almost 70000 a year. Yeah. I'm like, when you get out? He had just got an armed robbery and everything. So it's just showing you <laughs> how serious it is. And, you know, we're, you know, let's, let's not say it's not always black and white because it definitely is black and white when it comes to that. It's, yeah. And even for this brother getting out <clears throat> and, and doing the things he's doing and, and, and elevating and we kept connecting back on this path again, that's God, man. Damn it. Damn, we reconnected. With the other young lady yeah, 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 and Miranda, yeah, Miranda Gates. I wanted to also give her some recognition as well, who was my co-facilitator at the uh, or at the organization. We did the training and workshops together. Amazing woman, and, and she has a lot of great things going on. And she she put on this. She even said yesterday, she's like, "Wow, I remember him and his energy and you know, charismatic and so good." Right. Yeah, I, I well, you know, when I come out of prison, I had one track mind to succeed. 
you know, because I knew all the odds was against me. Yeah. Because when you're released from prison after 10 years with no resources, no family, no finance, and you homeless, they want you to come back. Yeah. I was determined not to come back. I was determined to face whatever obstacles I had and overcome them because I knew I was walking not by myself, but I was walking with Christ. And that was really my motivation, man, because I knew if God was for me, it didn't matter who was against me. Yeah. And so when I came out and I met you, I even got that certificate with your signature on the way you signed it. Yeah. You know, I noticed everyone that God put in my path to help me succeed to get to where I am. And that's why you never forget the road to travel on yeah. because so many people that you pass, God put in that place for a particular reason, for a particular season. And I take advantage of each one because you never know where it takes you to. So, man, I'm appreciative, yeah. you know, to be in this space because it's all due to God, not me. I give God all the glory, man, because, listen, so many come out and fail because yeah. they don't think they can do something. And God tell you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So to God be the glory on that one, bro. Oh, man, For real. We both in new spaces. Think about it. I've been yeah. slid over to some new spaces myself since then. So I do want to thank God as well for giving me the opportunity to work with all these lovely people. This this work and working with Scouts Scott, and Voices has given me the opportunity sitting in and, and understanding the game from Latoya, you know, meeting with the organizations and, and going in and doing the groundwork with them and, and seeing them in action and hopping on their committees. And it's something that I really appreciate it. It's, it's fulfilling. You know, you know, I was always That's saying, it yeah, it's, it's the feeling. That's why I was you loving you working with individual community. Exactly. Yeah. Working with him like that, helping people get back to work at that time. You know, it, it, it's, it felt so good getting people just the most basic interview advice, resumes. And then you're yeah. seeing these people and they tapping you on your back in the mall and they not saying man where my money at or why you over there looking at me crazy it's like oh brian i want you to meet my family this is my wife this is my kids yeah. this the dude i was telling you about that helped me with the resume or stuff like that so and coming full circle at wisconsin voices and being able to still do the same work and i still go out and you know uh get checked by kia when i ain't lifting the boxes properly or something <laughs> <laughs> oh is you listen i'm key out here <laughs> right 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 i didn't know how to use the uh, the jack the other day yeah, he, was, oh, man, he was so smooth with it i was like yes he only did a few months at ups and i got up out of there i was like yeah i'm going another route with this at 17 i knew i was like it's got to be another way to really get this place. I got my 15 feet. <laughs> UPS, was, UPS had me loading trucks. It was like 30, what's up, 30 feet or so I was loading that UPS. I'm like, no, nah, this ain't going to be me. I got to figure out. I went and did a car ballets, and I just kept finding the quickest way to get to helping you the people. other than living all that stuff. And I landed in helping the people, and it's been a blessing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. thank y'all. Thank, thank everybody in this row. Seriously. And then, um, Sylvester, uh, you got to talk about the quick few things real quick. Um. Uh, uh, advocacy day thursday please come out go to the um uh, go to the capitol with us um enjoy your day as um as we celebrate the last day of um black history month but also uh you're having nacho uh no well we're gonna do the nacho next friday Okay. Not this Friday, but next Friday. But okay. we'll announce it. But it'll be next Friday. Next Friday at the uh, at us? And it'll be at the office. You know, uh, we do the nacho and different things to support the youth program that we're working with to help. You know, not just young people, but their families. Okay. You know, because a lot of families need help, not just the young people, but the parents too. So we're working to help hope because the family is what need to be brought together and the wound need to be healed in many because that's how they destroy our community by dividing our families. Okay. Well, thank you so much. The slide, thanks to the team coming in. Brandon, thanks for coming in as well. We appreciate you. Uh, I want to shout out my, my uncle real quick. Happy birthday to him as well down in South Carolina, Uncle Junior. And you are on 860 WNOB 106.5 with BA Voice. Skies and Voices. Have a great rest of your day. and opinions expressed in this program do not reflect those of Wisconsin Voices. 
The views and opinions expressed by hosts and guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply any endorsement or representation by Wisconsin Voices. Thank you for listening to Be a Voice with the Wisconsin Voices. Be a voice. 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 Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. Visit WisconsinVoices.org. And learn more on how to be a voice with Wisconsin Voices.